Hey, brother. And as you know, here at Super Carlin Brothers, we are proud Slytherins and are happy to sport the silver and green whenever we deem it necessary, which would have been great today instead of purple. I really should have thought about the wardrobe for this video. But alas, Slytherin is a house at Hogwarts, which is a school in Europe. And anyone who watches this channel will probably also know that we are quite American. America! And as you may have heard, the American School of Witchcraft and Wizardry, Ilvermorny, and its four houses have recently been announced and written about on Pottermore by J.K. Rowling. So today, I'm going to run down everything you need to know about Ilvermorny and its four houses. Houses. Hey, Real quick warning for spoilers on the article. I won't ruin the ending, but I will be revealing some stuff, so I highly recommend you go read that either before or after watching this video. It is super interesting. Link in the description. Okay, so our story begins with a young girl named Isolt, who was born in 1603 in Ireland. Her father was a descendant of the great Animagus Morrigan, who could turn into a crow, and her mother was a, uh, wait for it, Gaunt, who you will recall from Harry's lessons inside the pensive in the Half-Blood Prince as being, eh, not so great people, and also the last living descendants of Salazar Slytherin. But with that being said, her mother and father were actually really kind people and happy to let her integrate with muggles. But her mother's sister, Gormlaith, Gormlaith, Gormlaith I'm going with? Gormlaith Gaunt did not like that her niece was integrating and such with muggles, and she was going to do something about it. As many of the Gaunts were, she was a bit of a pure blood elitist and didn't think that her niece, the descendant of both Morrigan and Slytherin, two really great wizarding families, should be consorting with non-magic folk. So, she killed her sister and her husband and kidnapped her niece. You know, rescued, rescued her niece. That was, that was her justification. She decided she was going to raise Isolt herself, but also decided that she did not need to go to Hogwarts, nor did she need a wand. But Isolt, being a smart young lass that she was, eventually realized that her rescuer was actually her kidnapper. And so one night she managed to steal her aunt's wand, escape from her grasp, and then immediately sailed to the New World to avoid being recaptured. America! And you'd think like having, you know, an ocean between two people would seem like sufficient hiding, but Isolt was not taking any chances. She immediately abandoned the settlements and headed north to Mount Greylock in Massachusetts. And while wandering the woods of Mount Greylock, she came across a tussle between two creatures, a Pugwudgy and a hide-behind. A hide-behind is, well, you guessed it, a creature that hides behind stuff. Actually, it's a little cooler than that. It can, like, contort itself to hide behind any object from whatever your perspective is. So it could be, like, right behind the microphone here, which I realize now you can't see. A Pukwudgie, on the other hand, is sort of the American version of a goblin. They hunt with poison arrows, can perform their own magic, and are very tricky. Isolt rescued the Pukwudgie from the hide behind, and the two became friends, but the Pukwudgie would not tell him her name, so she named him William. William began showing assault the magical beasts of the forest, her favorite of which was the Horned River Serpent, which to her shock she found she could sort of communicate with, descendant of Slytherin after all. Sometime later, Isolt and William came across the very same hide behind that had been trying to kill William, and this time it was attacking a family. Together they managed to kill the hide behind, but not before it had killed the parents of the two children left behind. And wouldn't you just know it, the two boys, Chadwick and Webb, were magical. <laughs> well, that's lucky. I guess except for, like, their parents dying. Hmm. But speaking of which, after Isolt nursed the two boys back to health, she returned to bury the parents, only to find that a nomad, that's American for muggle, by the name of James Stewart, had already done so. But before they could manage to exchange pleasantries, James knocked himself out by waving one of the parents' wands. Apparently wands don't like being handled by non-magical people. This is something I did not know. Wait a second, does that mean... Does that mean this is not a real wand? I knew it! 
So now Azolt was nursing back to health all three boys, and long story short, her and James fell in love and adopted the two Boot boys, Chadwick and Webster. Boot was their last name, I don't think I said that earlier. Together, the four of them built a house, which Azolt named Ilvermorny after her childhood home. And as the boys grew up, she told them everything she had managed to learn about the magical school of Hogwarts, and both of the boys just yearned to attend. Don't we all, boys? Don't we all? But alas, Isolt still feared Gormlaith and so would not return to Europe. Instead, she told the boys they would form their own school right there at Ilvermorny and she would make them wands. Somehow. But, you know, hey, that's a problem for your futurists, all right? But in the meantime, they decided to model their new school after Hogwarts, with each family member getting to create their own house. But being less vain than the Hogwarts founders, they decided not to name it after themselves. And good thing, too, if you ask me. I mean, <laughs> House Chadwick? <laughs> Please. Instead, they each named their house after their favorite magical creature. Isolt obviously chose the Horned River Serpent because, you know, she could understand snakes. Chadwick chose the Thunderbird, which can cause storms as it flies. That's kind of like Zapdos, if you ask me. Webster chose the Wampus, a crazy-looking six-legged panther that is, and I quote, nearly impossible to kill. Honestly, what does that even mean? I feel like there needs to be more description than that. It's like, it's just asking for a fight with a Wampus. Like, it's not impossible. I can kill that thing. And James, the nomad, who was not really familiar with magical beasts, chose the Pugwudgie because he liked the story he had heard about William. Solid reasoning, James. Solid reasoning. Also, how much does J.K. Rowling love the name James? And much like Hogwarts, each house valued different things reflective of their respective founders. But in addition to just reflecting a personality type, each house also represents a smaller part of the whole witch or wizard. The horned serpent represents the mind and often attracts scholars. Thunderbirds represent the soul and attract adventurers. Wampus represents the body and attracts attracts warriors, and Pukwudgie represents heart and attracts healers. Heart, what, like the fifth wheel of Captain Planet? I'm really starting to think Pukwudgie is sort of the Hufflepuff of America. Not that I find anything wrong with that, but then hey, I'm not a great finder. Now, despite having four houses like Hogwarts, there were some key differences, specifically in wands and sorting. So instead of the sorting hat, the sorting ceremony goes like this. Each student steps into the middle of a circular room, which has four statues. Each statue is a carving of the beast of the house it represents. And this is where it gets really cool. The statues then react if they want the student in their house. And more than one statue can react. And if that happens, then it's up to the student to decide which house he or she wants to go to. Really, it kind of reminds me of the voice. And in case you're wondering, yes, that does mean all four statues could react and say they want that student. But apparently that's only like a once in a decade kind of scenario. Also, rather than each house having its own colors, every student just wears the colors of the school as a whole, which are blue and cranberry. Blue because it was Isolt's favorite color, and cranberry because it was James' favorite flavor of pie. First of all, that's how you choose a school color, and second of all, cranberry's your favorite flavor of pie? James, you're in America. Apple. Apple is your favorite pie. Anyway, the other main difference is the wands. Instead of being purchased before school, they're distributed at school and left there over the summer holidays. This is so, like Hogwarts students, they can't practice magic when they're away from school. Although I have to say, this seems way more effective than just trusting parents. Did that seem like a massive loophole to anyone else? Like the ministry could detect magic but they couldn't sense who did it? AKA, if you live in a wizarding home, meh, just go ahead and do magic. We can't tell. I mean, if I was a wizard parent, I would want my kids practicing magic like all freaking summer. I mean, isn't that what we're paying to send them to school for so they can be the best wizard? But I digress. Speaking of wands, you may be wondering the answer to the question we asked earlier. How did Chadwick and Webster get their wands? Like, who made them? And the answer is, surprisingly, James, the Nomadge. That is, after he had a magical core to work with, which Isolt was able to provide for him after accurately dreaming of herself walking down to the river and getting a piece of the horn of the horned serpent. She then awoke and went to the river and got a piece of the horn from the horned serpent, so... Really good lucky dream there. And I think that is where I am going to end the story because I really don't want to spoil the ending for you, but I highly recommend you head over to Pottermore to check out the rest of the full article, especially if you're a Slytherin, and you will understand why 
after you've read it. But ben, my question for you and everyone else is obviously, what is your Ilvermorny house? I am a Thunderbird, which I guess makes me a Slitherbird or th Thunderin? Thunder, Thunderin. That's way better. I am a Thunderin. Let me know your house in the towel section down below. And if you don't know it, I will leave a link to the quiz also in the description so you can go take that and find out. These socks are amazing. Guys, thanks for watching. As always, please leave a like on this video if you haven't already. And subscribe so you don't miss any future Harry Potter videos. If you want some more Harry Potter action on Super Carlin Brothers, I recommend you check out this video, Everything You Need to Know About Wizards in North America, or this video, In Defense of Slither because I think we get a bad rap. But Ben, that's everything I've got for you today, man. I'll see you in another life, brother.